Hi, today I'm starting a new Scratch tutorial on scrolling platformers. Um, I'm going to be trying to create uh, this little game here, which I thought would be a good way of uh, going about a tutorial. We've got uh, a solid scrolling platformer. We've got uh, lava, as we love lava. We've got collectibles. We've got a starting animation. We've got jumping. We've got uh, a portal at the end here, which we go into, and it takes us on to the next level. We've got a timer. We've got uh, um, yeah, collision detection everything we need for the start of a really good platformer. So this is what we're going to be building today. Um, but of course, this was the first part and it's going to be just a simple part of the creating the scrolling and, um, and adding a little bit of movement in. Okay, let's start a new project. Okay, hello Scratchy. So what do we need? First of all, sprites. So it started with Sprite 2. I wonder why it says Sprite 2, not Sprite 1. Doesn't it always say Sprite 1? That confuses me straight away. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. Let's rename this one. So click on the little arrow there and let's type in player. As this is going to be us. There we go, player, much better. Now, we don't want Scratch Cat for this example. We want a nice, simple little graphic. I'm going to quickly just drag one in from my uh, backpack because I drew one earlier. And here he is, he's very simple. Let me zoom in for you. It's just a little bit map square. Uh, people on Scratch love squares as players. So that's fine. Let's just do that. Delete those. So there we go. And I'm going to call him player as well. There we go. Player. Great. And now we need some variables. So go back to the scripts. Let's add in some variables in the data tab. Make variable. Now I'm going to create for all sprites. And I'm going to use these in capitals so that we can remember that they are for all sprites. I have one for level, which is the level we're on. That's great. I'm going to make another one, again in all caps, called uh, scroll x. So that's how far across the level we've scrolled. And another one called scroll y. Okay, so there we go. Three variables like that. And they're for every sprite. Now we can hide those for now. Now make another variable, this time lowercase, and we'll do it just for this sprite. So it's going to be x. So I'll just create that. And another one called y, again for this sprite only. That's great. When we're using scrolling games, often we have to hold position in another variable rather than just using the normal go to position of position x and position y. I'll show that later why that's the case. Okay, that's it, the little player created. Now let's create a background platform. So let's duplicate here yeah, by right clicking on player, create another sprite. And we're going to name it as platforms, like that. Okay, go to costumes and we need to draw a uh, quick level. Let's just create a new costume. Get rid of the uh, player costume, we don't need that. And we'll call it level space one, space one. So it is level one and the first part of level one. Okay, there we go. And we're going to do it in the vector editor, simplicity. Draw a line, and we're just going to draw and make it a slightly thicker line. We're going to draw it across. Now, if we click like this and then hold down shift, it constrains us to drawing straight lines. See that? Before I let go. So I'll draw over here and I'll let go. There we go. So a nice straight line for us to walk around on top. So now I notice it's not actually visible on the screen, which is not very useful. Is that any particular reason? It's showing. It must be off screen. Let's go to motion and click on go to. There it is, right off the bottom. Let's put that back on. What should we do? Let's get the player moving. So click on player and we'll add in when green flag clicked, like so. And what we're going to do is broadcast and wait. Now I'm going to do this like this, just as a setup so that it's going to make it really easy for later on. So I'm going to broadcast my own little thing called green flag. This is so I can have more control over all the scripts, like when the green flag's clicked. So I'll only ever have one actual green flag, um, and I'll broadcast my own green flag from now on. Um, and and then I'm going to broadcast again. And this time, another new message. I'm going to broadcast 
play game. Great, so that's the first script. So let's do a receiver for that first green flag. Okay, so it's going to go in here and then go to green flag. And in here, we're going to hide. This is like setting up the game. So we're going to hide the character and we're going to go to front. And then we're going to have another receiver for the play game. Okay, so when we play the game, let's just get rid of this. So what we're going to do when we start playing the game is set level to one that let's do a uh, forever loop here okay and so we're going to start playing a game and we're going to go into a loop and the first thing we're going to do is broadcast again i like broadcast as you can tell and the first thing we're going to broadcast is going to be reset now the idea of this is it resets the game every time you go round so if you die or if you win a level you're going to reset the game for this level and after you reset the game you set it up so a new message set up we now need a custom block now these are super useful and we'll use them a lot but uh, right now I'm going to create one called game on that's all you need in that so click OK OK put that there now move your game on block just there after set up now this game on what we wanted to do is simply set the position that we want the guy to appear in so we'll set x and set y to zero that sets him where he wants to show and we put a show in there so it'll appear on the screen now that's not the same as set position x this is set variable x and y because we're scrolling game so i'm afraid we have to use our local variables for this our for this sprite only variables now after the game on insert a repeat until loop now this is going to be the tight loop of the game. It's going to go round and round in this little loop here. So what we're going to do inside this is another custom block, make a block. I'm going to call this tick. Now this is after the tick tock of a clock because it's a regular tick, 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 tick. It's actually going to be ticking 30 times a second. But for now that's fine. I'll just keep that like that. And no changes. So click OK. I'll pop that there. And I'll put the tick in the repeat loop. Now I'm not putting anything in that until yet because I just want it to keep going forever for now. What we're going to do in tick, well what we're going to do is check for key presses. So we're going to make it move left and right. So add in an if condition and we'll check sensing and key press left. Left arrow key. Okay so if left arrow key is pressed what are we going to do? Well we're going to change x by, and I'm going to choose minus 8 for a good number. And another condition of if right arrow, and we're going to change x by 8. So we're moving to the right. Motion, go to x, y. I'm just thinking where to put this, whether it should be down here or over there. Let's put it down here for now. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to need a minus in here on both sides. I'm going to position him at x minus scroll x and y minus scroll y. Okay. And after that, one more thing we're going to add is a broadcast and wait bottom of this little loop and what we're going to say in there is a new message and it's going to be tick like that okay so right now if we run this project we should find if we press left and right we can move left and right excellent that's the start of a project so now what we need is the background to scroll so let's change to the platforms script and we'll add in here when I receive green flag not the when I when green flag clicked but my own broadcast so I'm a bit more in control of this and what I want to do in there is for now I want to show my background which I've already got but I'll show it anyway just in case 
And then we need another event. And then this time it's tick. Remember we just broadcast that every time we go around the main loop. And in here we need a position. So go to X, Y again. And we're going to position the same as in the other script. So I can put in my minuses. And I'm going to position him at X. This is the X position of the platform now rather than the little guy because this is a for this sprite only. See? Minus scroll X and Y. Minus scroll Y. Like that. Now, that is that. So if I run that now, it seems exactly the same. However, if you go in, show this scroll X here, like that. Now right click it and say slider. You'll see the scroll X is now a slider. Now if I drag that, see the program is still running. Look at that. I can scroll the screen, both the player and the background. And I can still move this with the cursor keys. And I can still scroll the screen. Okay. So what I can do now is link the scrolling of the screen to the player. So in your main player sprite, get your set. And just before you position the player, so between the tick and the go to, change the set Y to set scroll Y X. So also set scroll X. And put the player X position in there. Now, do you see that on the screen when it's running? If I press left and right now, my player stands still. The background moves. So that is the start of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that and I shall make the next part very soon.